Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. Today I'd like to discuss the ideas of Einstein. Now, please bear in mind that I am not a physicist. I am a mathematician. Um, I've always been interested in physics, so and always wanted to uh, learn as much as I possibly can. But uh, when I tried to understand Einstein's uh, theories, uh, I always hit a roadblock. And uh, I I'm not alone in this. I don't know of anyone who claims to understand his theories, even uh, those in the mainstream. I've never come across an academic who has stated openly that he understands Einstein's theories. So um, just very quickly, what, what, what are some interesting facts about Einstein that people don't really know? So first of all, he openly admitted that he did not understand his theories and wondered how everyone else could have understood. How, can, how reliable can such theory be? He didn't understand the core concept of time. And in my article, which is at this link here, I explain exactly what is the concept of time. And Einstein did not understand the concept of time. Now, if his theories were all about time, how reliable can his theories actually be? Number three, <clears throat> Einstein's theories reportedly proved over and over again by the theoretical physics community, who I call theatrical physicists. They're really a bunch of clowns in reality. All those people who are constantly coming up with uh, Einsteinian uh, terminology for events that really have nothing to do with Einstein's theories. So they'll talk about gravitational waves, but that's not what was, that's not equivalent to what Einstein thought about when he thought about these things, okay? So uh, if a theory has been proved once, then what need would there be to prove it over and over again? And also, why are there so many writing articles and publishing books on Einstein's theories when clearly he did not understand them? Are they smarter than Einstein? That I could never uh, somehow figure out. Now, here are some surprising facts that you probably didn't know. There is no record anywhere of any IQ test, and yet the multitudes of humans have been convinced that Einstein had a genius level IQ. Einstein never conducted any experiments, and yet he is called a scientist. He was a patent clerk in Berlin before he escaped the Holocaust. So he had access to a lot of ideas, including some of the very ideas he talks about in his theory of relativity. Now, initially, he refused to accept the Nobel Prize, uh, which was awarded to him for the photoelectric effect, not the theory of relativity. And a clear statement was made by the Nobel Committee that it was not for the theory of relativity. This in itself is very strange to me and rather suspicious. It almost smacks of a secret agenda. Why would, why would they have to state that it was not for the theory of relativity? Why could they not just say it's for the photoelectric effect? It's almost as if there, there are things going on in the background that nobody you know, was meant to know. And ironically, ironically, here's the deal. Most dimwits and ignoramuses on the planet don't even know about the photoelectric effect. So the, they've all been convinced that it was because of the theory of relativity that he was awarded the prize. No one in the physics community has ever understood Einstein's theories or even claimed to. So these are inconvenient truths in a society where it appears truth is no longer relevant. So why am I talking about these things? Well, you know, Einstein didn't just uh, talk a lot about physics. He talked a bit about mathematics too. And he made some serious mistakes. Now, I'll place a link to this article in the details section, so don't worry about copying the URL for the time being. He had many wrong ideas. When I say wrong ideas, they're actually ill-formed ideas, okay? And I believe substantial books can be written on his fallacious theories. Um, 
Was Einstein a crank? No, I don't believe he was a crank. I think that Einstein was basically just sharing his ideas and opinions. And I think that uh, there were forces at work during his time which were hell-bent on making, uh, producing an image out of Einstein. For what reason, I don't know. Um, and, and in fact, Einstein made some very pointy comments in this regard. So, you know, Einstein didn't even really understand math that well. Now, I, I'd like to first say something. I have tried to understand the field equations. Uh, by the way, I'm a mathematician, so I know all about advanced calculus. I know about tensors. I know about differential equations. Please, before you go any further, I discovered the new calculus. Okay, <laughs> that that's a humongous achievement. Okay, so if I don't understand it, well, I don't think that leaves much hope for most other people. Okay, in other words, I know what I am doing. And I can tell you, I, I, I can't make any sense out of the field equations. They're, they're complete nonsense to me. And I'm not the only one, by the way. There are professors in the mainstream who say the same things. And if you read this article, you'll see that that is the case. <clears throat> now, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Einstein uh, made many quotes and a lot of them i think were really more theatrical than anything else he had an army of uh, uh pithy quotes if you want to call them that and one of them is this he says as far as the laws of mathematics refer to reality they are not certain and as far as they are certain they do not refer to reality um, then he makes another statement which uh it's just complete garbage um, he says, let us for a moment consider from this point of view any axiom of geometry. First of all, there are no axioms in geometry or in sound mathematics. For instance, the following, through two points in space, there are always, I'm getting out of breath, passes one and only one straight line. How is this axiom to be interpreted in the older sense and in the more modern sense? Now, you'll see later on that he actually contradicts himself, okay? So, for example, he says, for it cannot surprise that different persons should arrive at the same logical conclusions when they have already agreed upon the fundamental laws, as well <clears throat> as the methods <clears throat> by which other laws are to be deduced therefrom. Now, if everyone interpreted these so-called axioms, as you see, I have it in quotes, in different ways, there would be no converging conclusions, as it turns out. The conclusions today are fundamentally incorrect because they are all based on the same ill-formed concepts. All right. So really, I don't I'm not convinced that Einstein was a crank and I'm convinced that he was above average intelligence, but certainly not a genius. And I think that uh, there were <clears throat> powerful interest groups during his time and even today who still are forcing the physics community to adopt his terminology, forcing them to publish articles saying again that his ideas were correct and they were proved to be correct. Uh, whereas, you know, every now and again you'll hear uh, about gravitational waves or space-time curvature or a, a ripple in space-time, but none of those things actually correspond to Einstein's actual ideas. And how do I know that? Because none of the physicists, not even who, those who work at CERN in Switzerland or anywhere else in the world, understand Einstein's theories. Einstein's theories are flawed. They are, uh, they are basically not, they're unsubstantiated. There is no evidence for the theory of relativity. Yes, I know you've heard about uh, the light experiments and all that, but that doesn't actually correspond at all to what Einstein had in mind when he came up with his theory. All right, so, and a lot of uh, contradictions are found in Einstein's theories. So, now a theory is something that is basically put forth as a collection of ideas and 
statements and uh, propositions about certain uh, knowledge that is realized. <clears throat> it may or may not be correct. Um, so the reason I'm speaking about this is to set things straight where Einstein is concerned. The onus is on those who claim his theories are correct to prove them, not on those who don't understand them and say, you know, where is the evidence? It's not up to us who are looking at the theory to prove it, but rather to the one who set forth the theory or the, the, the proponents of his theories need to prove it. So they haven't been proving his theories. Every now and again, you'll see another article which is completely ignorant by somebody who doesn't even really understand physics that well. And just to, just to put a cap on things, I've never met any physicist, and I've spoken to many, who understood the concept of time. Now, time is at the core of Einstein's theories. Ask yourself, please, how accurate, how reliable can a theory be in which the author of that theory did not understand the core concept? I'm going to leave it at that. This is the New Calculus Channel. My name is John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.